Tech Scandia, we are on point to this. We have a fire on board. Tech Scandia, this is United States Coast Guard, we're This is a Mayday scan, I'm Mayday. A tugboat with a barge exploded off of Point Judith about three miles. Uh, 44 from Station Point Judith went out, got the people off the boat, and the people, the crew on the tug is up at our Coast Guard station right now. All crew members are rescued. We had an explosion, a small explosion on the boat, so we had to back off. Told everyone to jump in the water. They all jumped in the water at the same time. We put our rescue swimmer over, and he swam out to him. Every, a lot of the people latched onto him. We drew them all in. It took us maybe 10, 15 minutes to get everybody on board. One minor injury. That was a Coast Guardsman who's suffering from mild hypothermia right now because he went in the water to assist the crewmen into our boat. The six crew members are all fine, and they're up at our station. Very rough. Well, obviously, it's a very dangerous situation. This is the line of most intense weather. It is moving toward the east at about 30 miles an hour. That's when we'll have the peak wind gusts of 60 to 65 miles an hour in land, and perhaps as much as 70 miles an hour along the immediate coast. We have just learned that the barge carrying 4 million gallons of diesel fuel has now run aground near Matunik. However, at this point, there is no indication at the moment that any of the fuel is leaking. The tugboat, the Scandia, that had been pulling it is still attached and is still burning. barge is aground down there. You can see the, uh, the glow. It's still on fire. The barge is, uh, uh, the, the tug broke loose from the barge. The barge is right out there where the flashing red light is. When I saw it, it it's, uh, it's pretty scary looking. Um, first, when I had heard about it, it uh, sounded like they had it under control, but with the surf and the weather, um, apparently they didn't. Clearly, we're concerned uh, that the barge not break up, well, there's not a whole lot that can be done about it until the Coast Guard can get a, uh, a line on it or get a, a tug connected to it and pull it off the beach. It's a number two fuel oil, which is home heating oil. It's very similar to what was on the tank of World Prodigy that went aground in June of 1989. It's going to be very difficult to contain it until the weather calms down. Some of the guardsmen told me it's the worst they've ever seen it out there as far as the seas. It really doesn't look that good. Uh, this is the biggest spill I've seen since I've been with Save the Bay three years, and uh, we spend our, all of our time trying to prevent disasters like this. When they happen, the best we can do is, uh, is wait and hope and uh, participate, and we'll do the best we can under the circumstances. There is a sheen on the water, a very light sheen at this point that uh, goes for quite a distance, but it's uh, difficult to estimate how much oil has been spilled. Uh, there has been some oil going to the coastal ponds, and those are being boomed at the present time. Yeah, I'm very, very anxious that it not get into the ponds where that's one of the great nature conservancy places yeah. we have in the state, wildlife mm. refuges. You're talking about waterfowl, you're also talking about uh, shellfish, you're talking about uh, larvae for uh, winter flounder. Those are the kinds of things we're most concerned with at the moment. The, the immediate here. challenge is to try to get the product off the barge as quickly as possible. We've got people on board now assessing that and hopefully that'll be done uh, quickly. The bad news of course is that it's leaking oil and that's going to be one of the first things that we're going to need to take a look at how we can uh, stop the flow of oil or contain the flow of oil so that it doesn't uh, uh, hurt too many environmentally sensitive areas. The 
tough task of cleaning up heating oil, which spilled from a 340-foot barge that ran aground off of Matunic Beach, begins today. Right now, there is a massive effort underway to get this spill cleaned up. There's a sheen out there now. It's quite extensive, a couple miles long, uh, a couple hundred yards wide. There's always a chance that something's going to happen. Immediately, you could smell it. It's a shame. I just decided to come here and see what was going on. It's a shame to see the, the, the cohorts and the lobsters over there. One little lobster's over there, he's just crying. You know, he's going to die. And uh, there's like starfish. She picked up about five starfish all washed up. They're all dead. Custom Pond is a good place for uh, short-eared owls, which you really wouldn't think this would affect. But they, they glide over the marshes and they feed on the... Uh, on the wildlife in the marsh, so I mean if that seeps into there then it's, it could be devastating. These birds are all uh, federally protected. There's uh, clams and stuff on the beach, there's a duck in the water trying to get up, it's just couldn't get out of the water. This could have happened in Narragansett Bay, that thing could have blown up in the bay and, and it would have wiped out the shellfish industry for quite a few years. Yeah. I mean they're, they're uh, playing with dynamite and they up a single hole vessel with that stuff in Narragansett Bay. Right now, uh, there is a potential for an impact uh, to get some minor sheening in the Block Island area. Well, that would threaten the, the shellfish. It would threaten the, uh, the habitat of you know, all the natural, the birds. The, you know, it could be a devastating impact on the harbor. Uh, we are prepared to put in a boom, and we don't uh, quite have the, the necessary equipment to absorb it if it should get past the boom. It doesn't matter what it does, it'd be a bad situation. Our major concern right now is the shellfish in the Great Salt Pond. The Great Salt Pond has a tremendous amount of shellfish, and we don't want to destroy the inner ponds and the aesthetics of the wildlife that uh, they can enjoy in their food habitats. And our top story tonight, holding tight off the coast of South Kingstown, Weather conditions are improving. Now the Coast Guard hopes to keep that battered barge from spilling any more of its dangerous cargo. This is my uh, first trip out here, but I now understand why people uh, love the quality of life here and the, the wonderful treasure that the state has here. And that's why uh, I'm here and the Commandant's here We're working in partnership with the state because we want to do everything we can to preserve it and to minimize uh, the damage from this spill. The, the, this morning when I went out in the helicopter to see the amount of uh, oil out there uh, and the width of it, uh, by probably about a 10 by 5 mile area. The sooner we get this oil out of here, the better I'll feel. I'm just trying to figure out if there's any way that we can reach him. He's probably in the backhoe, but I wanted to know uh, his location because we're standing by here. We've had uh, a tremendous support group here of uh, volunteers from Block Island that have been working around the clock to protect this resource, and everyone has done an outstanding job. This is all uh, local people that have laid uh, all of this boom. Okay, the reason for this boom, we're going to put in an angle from Beans Point over to this beach. If we do get a sheet flow, it'll collect all the oil and bring it onto the sand, and then we can just remove the con contaminated sand. On the other side of Beans Point is where we have all the endangered birds and species of wildlife, and that's what we really want to protect. Our primary concern is the protection of this harbor, and uh, we're confident that it's protected. Down. I don't think there's a fisherman in Point Judith or anywhere that's going to be affected that isn't frustrated because it's completely out of your hands. You have no control over the situation whatsoever. There's nothing you can do. You just have to do the best you can, help out, do what you can to help out. You see a lot, you see a lot of guys helping out here and that, that's, that's what the camaraderie is all about. But you can't, um, you can't help but be frustrated because it's, it's out of your hands. They started coming and they put the booms in and we called up again on a Sunday and they set, they set, up, set up the second one. 
And now the snake come down yesterday with their little boat. They come in here and he says, we definitely got to put another boom in this pond because it's just going over those booms. There's too much tide there. It is a beautiful pond. There's a lot of quag and shellfish right in that bed over here. I mean, there's hundreds of ducks and swans in this pond. And they all just seem to be disappearing. I guess they're going into a spot where there's no oil, I guess. I'm just concerned about, we, they, they do ski in this pond. We swim in this pond. And there's a lot of bass in this pond. So I don't know if that's going to have any effect because the bass do migrate. They do, do move out of here. But the main concern is the shellfish. That's the main thing. This has never, ever happened. Um, we're devastated. Uh, we we feed the the wildlife. Um, I don't know what's going to become of it. I just don't know. It, it's just sickening. What 50 cc is a good cost in this one? Okay, this is the loon. We've gotten about 12 birds in so far. The, the oil itself it does a lot to their feathers. It prevents them from being water buoyant, so they they actually sink. They they'll drown. That's why they try to get to shore. Um, we have one that is really, really in bad shape. We're trying to save. His temperature don't, doesn't register on a thermometer. It's terrible. Everybody's bringing birds in. OK, 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 you are a feisty little guy. I need extra hands in. We're supposedly getting 15 or 20 more. We've heard reports of 10 to 12 dead birds that have been found so far. They look pretty good, and I, I've heard that this number two heating oil is not as bad as, say, crude or something like that. So hopefully we can help these guys up. We've been very lucky. The uh, town people here in Narragansett have come through for us. This is actually the um, area where they house their trucks. Um, and we have basically come in and stripped it down and made it into a rescue center for the care and the cleaning of the oiled wildlife. We've gotten an awful lot of community support, which is great. The donations have been coming in. We've got volunteers um, assisting us in this effort. Um, and the responsible party for this oil spill, um, they're picking up the tab for the rest. Block Island's just picking up a few of however many hundreds or, or more there may be out there. That would be 27 dead and one living. Hi. Which fine. I did something. I don't want to coop. No. A lot of the guys that were here today to organize the cleanup are fishermen or work for the harvest department or the shellfish. And not only are they affected by the spill itself, but they're all out of work. Now the guys that are were using their fishing boats to put up the booms, they can't go fishing. Salvage workers and the Coast Guard are hoping that the weather will allow them to refloat the barge North Cape from the waters off Moonstone Beach today. The way things are looking today, they're probably only going to be able to use the smaller barge. That only carries about 200,000 gallons of oil, so the progress will be a bit slower today. Tonight, there are no answers why Ekloff itself asked an independent tug to break away from the emergency. Everybody's frustrated. I'm sure the captain's frustrated. You'd like to be able to do this in two hours, but it can't be done. You have a feeling sometimes of a little helplessness with respect to the situation. And the governor was exactly right. I'm frustrated. The team's frustrated. We all want to get this done, but we know that there's a certain order and a certain pace you have to go at to, to get it done safely. As much as I hate to have oil in the water, uh, the next worst thing or the worst thing is to have blood in the water. here in southern Rhode Island is rather unpredictable. Uh, I thought I knew that. I understand it a lot better now after being here a couple of days and try to plan uh, ops around the weather. It's mid-afternoon with the storm approaching here on Moonstone Beach. 
The winds have been gusting over 40 miles an hour. The seas have been increasing, but the barge right over there isn't budging. So the question now is, will that fog hamper efforts to get these barges out of here? The Coast Guard brought the work to a halt late last night. Now they're just hoping to stabilize the vessel so it can weather the storm. Tomorrow may be a better day for crews trying to remove that grounded barge from a sandbar off Moonstone Beach. The window of opportunity is between 9 and noon tomorrow. The goal for today is really to get the barge out of the area entirely. The next high tide we can look forward to is around midnight tonight. That's when they're going to try to do it again. It's less than 45 minutes until high tide. And when it passes, so will the best opportunity to move the North Cape. to do it during daylight of course uh, uh, with the natural light uh, but we have uh, plenty of lighting and, and again the bottom line is safety uh, we're going to do it safely if we do it at all based uh, on where the vessel grounded in sand uh, we feel good that the vessel will be seaworthy once we pull it off but until we pull it off get divers down look at it uh, we don't know what the damage is everywhere we were working which is an area of about five or six miles along shore and out to two miles offshore there was a, a strong presence, a strong odor of oil on the surface. What was surprising, though, was the oil down into the water column. So the oil's down there. The oil is known to be toxic. What the effects on the animals will be yet remains to be seen. So we can expect to see them working here all morning, and we'll keep you updated on what kind of progress they make. full week and finally the barge grounded off South Kingstown is free. The salvage crews were finally able to refloat the North Cape as the tide came in late this morning. The first good news we've had in a while, the North Cape barge is now about a mile offshore. There's a diver down with a video camera and they're, they're viewing the bottom of the uh, barge to see the stability of it. Based on that survey we determined that the vessel uh, was not suitable uh, to go to sea. The choice right now is to bring the vessel into uh, NETC Newport it was just fantastic and a, uh, an indescribable feeling when that barge came off to see it floating uh, on water once again the way barges and boats are supposed to be and not up on a beach somewhere. to see what it looks like without a barge. It looks pretty good without a barge, but we've got a tug to go yet. You know, that's why we live in Rhode Island, because of its coastline. It's so beautiful. Well, well you know, it's, it's hurt the environment for a time. But isn't it wonderful that, that no matter how bad it becomes, God takes care of a lot of things and brings it back. can't re-emphasize enough my satisfaction with the way this all went. If it was a nice uh, sunny day in the middle of the summer, this would be a, a dangerous operation. Given the wind and waves and weather we've had out there, it, it's been a, a, a very, very difficult operation and it has uh, uh, been done safely. This has been a tough week for all of us, as you know. The oil spill that polluted our waters and shores has taken a very harsh toll. But I think it's also brought the best out of all of us. Without the cooperation of a wide range of agencies, organizations, businesses, and individuals, this spill would have been much worse than it was. Save the Bay extends its heartfelt thanks to all those who helped stop the spill and assess the damage. We are here today because we care about our coast. We are here today because we care about fish and wildlife. We are here because we are sad and angry about an oil spill that has damaged our beaches, our salt ponds, 
our fish, our wildlife, and most importantly, the lives of all the people who depend upon a clean and healthy coast for recreation and livelihood. He's like, why is the ocean so rough? And I tried saying that the ocean's really mad that this happened. We were really upset about it in the beginning, but now we're trying to think positive about it. I mean, the barge is gone, things are starting to clean up. People are really working hard. A lot of people are getting dedicated. He just wants to know, is it going to be better? And I tried telling him that the earth, the earth takes care of itself, remember? And it rejuvenates, and it'll be all set.